Hey guys, how's it going? Um, it is snowing right now. I don't know if you guys can really see that, but uh, it's snowing today and so there's no flying going on. We tried to go on flying earlier this morning, didn't really work out. Um, so now we're grounded and I thought I'd do another little informational video for you guys. Um, something that a lot of people don't really understand is how a helicopter works, how, how it flies, what do you use, the three different controls um, to control the helicopter and, and how do you actually make it fly. So I just wanted to take a little bit of time today, um, show you the three different controls and how they all work and how they work together. I'm not going to get too in depth in the aerodynamics of it, um, but I wanted to give you a basic uh, understanding and overview of it. So um, the three different controls that you use, first of all, are the pedal controls. I'm going to start with the easy one uh, so you have down by your feet you have the pedal controls and uh, in an airplane it's known as rudder controls in a helicopter we just call it uh, yaw pedal controls basically or just pedal controls and um, so that one controls the helicopter if you push left or right pedal it controls the helicopter um, to turn to the left or to the right and the way that works, just to give you a brief understanding here, um, when the blades are spinning around like this, in a North American helicopter they spin around to the left like this, and because of that spin, the torque from that, that rotor spinning causes the helicopter to want to spin to the right. So if you didn't do anything, if you didn't have a tail rotor back here, and you didn't do anything, the helicopter would actually naturally just spin around in circles, very rapidly actually, um, while the blades tried to turn in this rotation here in this direction. In European helicopters, the blades spin the other way, and so the torque is opposite. So the torque is to the left on those helicopters. So um, because they figured out, hey, we gotta, we gotta do something about this, they created a tail rotor back here, okay? And so most conventional helicopters, well, all conventional helicopters, um, have some form of a tail rotor back here, whether it's uh, just a, a two or three or four bladed um, tail rotor, or like the Fenestron, like we're gonna be getting in the Cabri. Um, that's the same idea, it's just more blades, basically, it's kind of more like a fan. Um, so they created this tail rotor back here to counteract that torque of the main rotor system, okay? And so what we're actually doing, when we adjust our pedal controls back and forth, left and right, we're actually either increasing or decreasing the pitch of these tail rotor blades, okay? The tail rotor blades are spinning at a constant speed, and so we adjust the pitch angle of those blades, and that controls how much thrust there is on that tail rotor in the back here, okay? So if we find the perfect balance point between those two pedals, we can actually make the helicopter hover in one spot and it won't rotate to the left or to the right. And then if I go ahead and apply a little bit of extra left pedal, for example, the helicopter will start to rotate to the left. And if I apply a little bit of right pedal, the helicopter rotates to the right, okay? So the pedal controls are really only used for when you're in the hover or in slow flight. They're not really used a whole lot for when you're in forward flight. In forward flight, the airflow over the rotor or over the, the airframe and over the tail fin in the back and so forth um, is actually gonna keep the helicopter straight in a nice line. And so you're not gonna really have to worry about that torque effect the same as you do uh, when you're in slow flight or in the hover. So that's what the pedal controls do. Okay, the next is we have the collective control. Okay, so the collective control is used with your left hand and that's just an up and down stick. That one's pretty simple as well. And so what's actually happening when you raise that collective, when you lower that collective, the pitch of all the blades, whether it's two or five or however many blades you have, the pitch of all the blades increases at the same time in the same amount and decreases at the same amount. So if I raise the collective, all the blades increase pitch an equal amount at the same <clears throat> at the same time. If I lower the collective, it decreases the pitch at the same time. So what's that actually doing? That's again, the main rotor blades are spinning at a constant speed. There's no speed change. But when I raise the collective and increase pitch, that increase lift, and so therefore the helicopter goes up. So left hand up, helicopter up. Left hand down helicopter down. It's basically that simple. Okay, so that's what I'm doing with my left hand. Now if I'm in forward flight and I want to let's say go faster, instead of um, pushing, we'll talk about the cyclic in a second, instead of pushing forward on the cyclic, I would actually combine that with raising the collective a little bit so that I get more pitch, therefore more power, and then I would combine that with a cyclic movement, which we'll talk about in a second, and I can translate that to more speed so I can actually make the helicopter go faster. 
Okay. Now let's lastly talk about the cyclic control. Okay. Cyclic is the most um, complex of the three controls. It does the most amount of things and it's amazing what's actually going on up in the rotor system uh, every time we move that cyclic. Okay. So the cyclic is with your right hand. You can push it forward, back, left and right or any combination of that. You can put it in any direction you want. And essentially the, the most simple way of thinking about it is if I push that cyclic forward, the helicopter is going to go forward. If I pull it back, the helicopter is going to go back. If I push it left, it'll go left. If I pull it, push it right, it'll go right. Okay. So thinking specifically about while we're in the hover, if I want to back the helicopter up, I just pull back on that cyclic stick and the helicopter backs up. Okay. What it's physically doing, just give you a little bit of aerodynamics of what it's physically doing. When I move that cyclic stick, it's actually adjusting the pitch of each blade whether it's two or more, it doesn't really matter, uh, adjusting the pitch of each blade individually. So each blade is getting a specific pitch angle based on where it is in the rotation. And that's the real key. Okay. So for example, if I were to push forward on the cyclic, I want the blades at the front right up here. I want them to be diving and actually going to their lowest point. Okay. Now, interestingly enough, there's something called phase lag. Phase lag means that any spinning mass like this, if I have an action at one point in that rotor system, the reaction to that actually happens 90 degrees later. So if I want the blade right here, if I want it to be dipping, decreasing its angle of attack and dipping as it comes to the front of the rotor system here, it actually begins that process way over here. Okay. And so when I push that cyclic forward over here, this this blade is pitching down and as it comes around it's actually getting to its lowest point right here in the front of the rotor system and then it turns around again the pitch angle starts to increase as it comes around through this portion and by the time it gets to the back over here it's actually at its highest pitch angle and the blade is actually flapped up to its highest point so interestingly enough Every time these blades spin around, they change their pitch angle. We call it feathering. Okay. So it's actually changing its pitch angle every revolution, every time those blades spin around. And not just that, but as it spins around and it changes its pitch angle, the blade itself actually flaps up and down like a bird's wing would flap. Okay. And so it's going to flap up and down every single rotation. So there are so many things, incredible things. And this is just the very basics of aerodynamics. But every time this blade spins around like this, it's feathering and it's flapping like this as well as a few other aerodynamic things but those are the two key things to be thinking about when I make a cyclic movement so every time I adjust that cyclic control the blades change their pitch angle and they flap depending on where they are in the rotation okay but to make it really simple I push forward the helicopter goes forward, I pull back, helicopter goes back, I push left, it goes left, I push right, it goes right. So that's pretty simple. Okay. Now the, the fun part and the exciting part about flying a helicopter is you have to work and combine all three of those controls together at the same time. Now doing that, especially in the beginning for students, as you guys have seen in some of my previous videos, learning how to hover, learning how to take off and land, those are really, really challenging things because the helicopter is not designed to be stable. It's just inherently designed to be unstable and so it's constantly trying to spin around and flip upside down and we as a pilot we have to be able to control that and actually make sure that that helicopter um, does what we want it to and actually stays nice and stable so when you hop into the helicopter and you don't know how a helicopter flies it feels really easy it feels really stable and comfortable um, because us as a pilot we're stabilizing that helicopter and making it do exactly what we want it to okay um, now yeah, again like I talked about if I if I want to fly forwards I'm going to push forward on that cyclic. Now, if I push forward on the cyclic and I want to accelerate, I'll probably pull a little bit of pitch as well. So I'll raise that collective with my left hand a little bit, and that's going to give a little pitch angle to all the blades and the helicopter is going to go ahead and start flying forward. Okay. There's lots of more interesting things that go on while you do that. If I raise the collective, I'm actually increasing the amount of torque. Remember we talked about torque at the very beginning. So I'm increasing that torque. Therefore the helicopter, it actually wants to yaw a bit. And so when it wants to yaw, I actually have to push some pedal to counteract that yaw. So when I raise collective, I actually have to push a little bit of left pedal to stop it from yawing. 
and then I can continue to do my flight. So, um, so there's lots of really interesting things to know about how the helicopter flies, but I just wanted to give you guys, uh, for those of you that don't understand how this works, uh, just to give you a real basic understanding of it. Um, I hope you guys like my little model. My in-laws gave it to me a couple Christmases ago. Um, and I, I actually quite like it, a uh, little Coast Guard helicopter. I use it in some of the de demonstrations in ground school and so forth. Um, but anyways, that was a demonstration of how a helicopter flies. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you like these, I've, I've been told by several people that, um, that you really enjoy these informational videos. Um, if you guys have any ideas of videos that you want me to do in the future, please let me know. Uh, put it in the comment section below, uh, message me. I'd love to know you guys' feedback. Um, as, a, as a pilot, um, quite often there's there's things that I just do on a regular basis. I don't even think about it I don't think that there's people that really don't have an understanding of how this stuff works So uh, if there's anything you guys want to know any questions you do have any videos that you do want me to do um, Just let me know and uh, put it in the comment section and I'd be more than happy to do that for you guys So as always, um, I hope you liked it. If you did give it a thumbs up, please subscribe to my channel as well um, And share it with your friends anybody that you think um, might find this interesting uh, go ahead and share it with them. So thanks a lot and we'll talk to you guys later.